Hello and welcome to a new Google Sheets video in Practical Sheets. Today we continue our series in an inventory web app using Google Apps Script and Google Sheets. So we've already done, we have already start creating our purchases in the first part. In this second part, we're going to start improving our formulary, given a, give it a bit of form. And also the most important thing we're going to do today is to create a dropdown. Not, it's not only dropdown, it's a dropdown that syncs up with my product. So if I create a new product here, or let's say we, yeah, create a new product, APP 100, whatever. And then I reload my web app, it automatically will have all the new references. And the other thing we're going to do is that once we submit, it will reset. So you can choose a new one and a new one. And this is a thing we haven't done we hadn't done in the past. I know we go, we are going baby steps, but you're going to have a really nice web app uh, at the end of this. Thank you so much. And I always like to invite you to subscribe to my Patreon page so you can download these and more than 150 templates that we have there. And you can ask me anything you need. And uh, we're already building a community of more than 200 patrons that you can start uh, helping each other out in our projects. You can join there or you can just subscribe to the channel and give me a like or a comment. This also helps a lot. No more talking, let's begin. I assume that you come from the last video, so I wouldn't have to do a summary, but it's always good to, to know where we are. So we have a Google Sheet that have two sheets, one with the products that was manually input, and one with the purchases that this is what we do with our web app. To deploy our web app, what we did was go to extensions app script here, and then we created this to get function that is the one that creates or implements the app. In order to do an app, we need an HTML. And we have it in another file, an HTML that we created. It's basically a very, very, it's a very, very basic form that, but we leveraged a framework called Bootstrap to help it look much, much nicer. Okay. And we did a simple function that allowed, I'm going to do this format so it looks better, that allowed my form to work with sheets. Basically, that the things I input in my form goes with sheets. So given that this is a, I, I copied my last file, it's a good opportunity to deploy it again. So I'm going to name the project. It's always a good idea. Inventory Web App. Then I'm going to click Deploy. New deployment in this case, because it's my first deployment. If I if it was a new version, I would go to manage deployment. In this case, let's go to new deployment. Let's call this inventory web app part one. And I'm going to execute it as me, but the access will be for anyone. But you could say that it could be anyone with a Google account also. Let's deploy it. I need, but and it will ask me for some authorizations. So I'll select my account, go to advanced, go to my project, allow. And that's it. I already have it. And this is the web app I need, the URL. And here it should work. So let's try it out. I'm going to put an, a reference I know it exists. In this case, APP005. And let's do quantity 20. Remember that I, I have these, these arrows that allow me to go down or up very easily. Let's save. And let's see here in our purchases that it put the APP005 that is toaster with a quantity of 18. It inputs the date of today and it automatically brings the cost and calculates the total. Okay, very nice. So the first thing I could do is make this form a little easier to see. The good thing about Bootstrap is that it's responsive. This means that if I minimize or I change the, the size of my window, it will adapt. This is nice. But when I have it like this, maybe this form so large, it doesn't look that good. So I'm not going to stop a lot in the bootstrap. This is for an entire course, and I'm sure there are a lot of videos online. So 
let's not waste time there but uh, I will try to show you a bit of tricks in the bootstrap world so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a row why I'm going to create a row I'm going to create a kind of a table I'm sure there are a lot of ways to format this and there may be bootstrap experts out there but this is how uh, an easy way to do it so it's time in one way I could do it is to create this div as a row an easy way so remember that the div is like a container it's like a section so I'm going to create this class and call it row and the row normally has columns inside so I'm going to create a new div call it put a class of row of call sorry I could put and this when I leave this with rows and calls then I could include a lot of different things for example I could do a formulary that has columns so I have the reference and the quantity here and then in the next column I have the, the date and another thing there so, and much much more so I'll leave it already constructed so you can create more complex formularies so I'll close this div and then I need to put another div down here and we can right click and format the document so organizes things visually and what I could do is play with this column for example I could play with the size how do I play with the size in uh, right to the column I'm going to hit space and then we could do call guide or actually in the same call I could put call line and then I could say for example SM1 if I save and I refresh what it does it is it puts the this is the smallest way I could put a formula maybe it is too small so maybe I could play with this It's not a small one but maybe two but maybe three but maybe maybe four so let's do four for example this is a thing we could do or you could play not in such small increments maybe we could do MD a bit bigger MD4 let's say and let's refresh and it looks nice the second thing I could do is maybe move this to the right a bit so this we could do it with a number of ways there are a couple of ways to center it I like to use this one offset and let's do MT MD and how many middle spaces do you want to move let's say that if this is four let's move it maybe two see what happens let's say this is a lot of trial and error again let's refresh and it looks nice maybe one more three MD three save refresh maybe this title looks a bit weird there so I could also include it inside of the column so I could cut this and put it inside my column and again right click format the document save and let's see how this looks maybe it's a bit too much then I could uh, maybe align in the center the text and a lot of things more or you you say this is maybe too small for you there are a lot of things we could do with this for now let's leave it as it is and you'll be free to experiment however you want okay this is the first thing just to look a bit nicer but we don't care about nicer we care about functionality so the first thing I want to do is this reference if you remember in the last video you have to write it down it would be really nice if I could just select it from the reference I already have so I already have these references so why don't I do a drop down of these references I think this will be most of the video because it has a lot of steps so I'm going to close all my windows to the right and what I'm going to do is remember that we have this input that is the drop down right now I'm not going to use the input but I'm going to use another way so let's open our bootstrap again and close it and let's see what do I need to use so again bootstrap docs and here I'm going to my forms and there is a thing called select this select is basically this drop down this is what I need so I'm going to take this so I'm going to copy it go back to my inventory I'm going to put it for now I'm going to put it down here as my reference right click format the document maybe I have to do it manually sometimes so right click and the type I don't need to put a type in the select in the class let's leave form select here I could remove this part I'm going to put the same same ID 
and I think I could remove this and it should work. Let's save and let's try out. Excellent. Open the select menu. Maybe remember that I removed this area label. Maybe I could put something in. I could change it. And so here in the selected, this is the like the first thing that the person is going to see. Maybe I could change this for choose your preference. Save, let's update, and it looks nice. The bad thing is that I have these things and I need to have my reference. So the first thing I could do is to copy them manually. App001, App002, App003, and not only here, but in the value. So this doesn't make much sense. The idea is this, that this is automatic, but because what happens if this changes and it's not no longer up 001, but ref 001, then I would have to go and do it manually. This is not a good idea. Let's save and let's try to see that everything is working for now. And you can see that it's it will still work. And if we go here to our sheets, everything continues to work just fine. However, I only have two references. So the main point of this video is how do I do to go and look for all of my references? There are a couple of ways of doing it that you'll find online. Maybe there are more. One is using what is called the scriptlets. So you'll see that here they will put something like uh, this um, less than and then this interrogation sign and equals, and then some code here. It's a way of putting code inside my HTML. I don't like it. I think it is a way and it could work, but I think it's not that safe, not knowing a lot about programming. I think it's not that safe. And secondly, I think it looks really, the code looks really horrible, but it's just me. And I think the other way is a bit more smooth in my opinion. Okay, so this is how we're going to do it. For this, we need, to continue doing something here in our script. The first thing I need to do is to initialize this. And for this, I'm going to remove all of these options because these options, we're going to create them via JavaScript. So what we're going to do is to create a new function. Here, we only have one function, the one that stores, but now I need a function that populates this dropdown. It goes and collects all of this data and then it brings it to my web app. Okay, so this is a new level of communication because before we were communicating from the web app or the formulary to the Google Sheet. Now I'm going to communicate from the sheet to the web app. So this is really nice because you start to having this double way communication. So let's create this function. Let's say build dropdown. And for building this dropdown, the first thing I'm going to do is connect with my dropdown that I know that it has the ID reference. So how do we connect here? We've already done it before. Document, get the element by ID, and in this case, in the, well, actually, we already have it here. So I could copy this and bring it here. But I don't need the value in the, this time. Let's call this. Let's store it in a variable. Could be var dropdown. And that's it. Now I'm going to start creating all my options. So how do I do it? In this dropdown, I'm going to have this, this option called append. Remember that last time in the last video, I told you that it would be a nice option to use the Visual Studio code so it can help you a bit more. So we're going to do append child. This is an option of the dropdowns and we're going to append an option. Now we have to create this option, variable option. And this option will create it in the object document. Now here we are getting out of our zone of comfort because our zone of comfort, if you've been programming in Google Apps Script, is Google Apps Script or JavaScript. Now we're going to JavaScript specifically for HTML. So that is where JavaScript began actually. So let's say document. And we're going to create an element that is an option. Parentheses and in Quotation marks will say option, okay? And now I need to know what that option is going to, what is the text of this option? So we can say option 
dot inner text and we're going to call it option one just to see if it's working and for this to work for now this is not the best method but we could call our build drop down from our script this is what is called a global variable or a global function once it loads it will build the build drop that's a better way to do this with a um, event handler but for now let's keep it simple and see if it works let's say and for now you should only bring this option one let's see and it only has one option perfect really nice and if i want more options then i should do this again option inner text option one then option two then option three and append it and append it when we're going to do a lot of these things we use what is called a loop so one of the most famous loops is this four so in this four we could begin like this we could say let's go from i i equals to zero and then let's do i up until 10 for example and then let's do i plus plus this what this means is that it will go first in zero then in one and in two and three and four until it arrives to 10 to nine sorry so we could do it in one and min minus or equal to 10 so it will do 10 options and we're going to insert this inside our loop so let's cut it and put it here and instead of option one we are going to say option plus i so this should create a drop down with 10 options but for this to work i need also this option to put it inside my loop so it creates always a new option okay so let's try it so here i have my 10 options excellent i'm trying to build this step by step so this is nice but now I want these names to change depending on these references. Okay, so how do I bring these references? What I could do is inside my build dropdown, there are again many ways of doing this. We're going to use what we used last time, my google.script.run, and we're going to create a function in my Google script that sends the array, the proper array. So we're, let's call this function array elements whatever i know bring references just as we did here and this doesn't need uh arguments so we just have it open and close parentheses and this will return something so actually this won't run here this will run down here and the build drop down won't be alone but we're going to create something we haven't seen before that is this with success handler and inside the with success handler we're going to put the function that will manage or handle the references that these bring references return so you can write here build drop -down. so again what this will do is first this goes right to left first it'll execute this bring reference we're going to create right now in Google Apps Script. And then the bring references will send an array. This array will then go to the left to this. If it successfully brings the array, this is with what is called with success handler. If it successfully returns an array, then it will, whatever it returns, will be managed by this build dropdown function. Okay, so now I need to have an an argument in this build dropdown. Let's call this references. And these references will be just an array. And this array is what I'm going to move one by one. So instead of option I, we're going to say references I. So it will go, I will send an array with app 001002. And when it creates, it creates the options, it first, sorry, one no, I. It will go, it will create first up 001, then up 002, and on and on and on. So what I need to do is this bring references function so that everything works. So let's go to our code. Let's create the, our new function. And what I will do, it will be similar to this. Many of these things, we could use them. I don't need the purchase. I just need the product, the WS, and product data. Actually, most of these will work perfectly. Let's call this. I need a, a more advanced programmer knows that maybe this, we could put it as a global variables, but for now, I don't care about that. 
Let's delete the purchase. I don't need the purchase. Actually, this is all I need. Now I can have the reference list and return that, re that reference list. That reference list. So we could do return reference list because it's an array. With this map, if you remember from the last video, what I do is take all this array and just uh, isolate these elements in an array, in a simple array. And this is why exactly what I need. So with this success handler, what I'm going to do is first go to bring references here in my Google Apps script. Then it will build the array and bring it here and send it to this build dropdown. And I think this should work. Let's see if it's that simple. Let's see. And let's try it. Let's see if it works. Why is not working up until 10? No more. Because here in my four, in the HTML here, I put four up until 10 and I need it's not until 10, it's just whatever number of references there are. So what I could do is do references dot length. That's it. Let's save. And now let's write out. And here I have all of them. And I have one undefined, maybe because I put less or equal. So just less. Again, okay, let's save. Excellent. Really nice. And, you know, you could start writing out APP100, APP00, APP00, okay. What else could I do? Maybe if you have a lot of references, maybe this is not the best way. Maybe we could do like an autocomplete, but I'll leave this to for another lesson. This has already taken about a while. So for now, it's nice for you to be able to select. What I want to do is that when it starts, let's refresh again. I don't want it to have APP001, but I want it to have, remember as we had before, like choose your reference. So what we could do is at the beginning, create a reference outside of my loop, create a first option that will be, the inner text will be choose, choose your reference and then we'll append that. Before we do all of them, the first one we're going to create is our, our default option. Let's see. Excellent. It looks really nice. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to lower this, <laughs> this uh, size. It looks just too big. So for this, I'm just going to change this. It will be H3 and this will be H4. Let's see. Yeah, much nicer. Okay, it's looking really good. Let's see if it's continue to work. A017, let's see, 56. Let's save. Let's go to our sheet. And it was 617, 56. Perfect. It works really nice. What I thought I was going to be able to do a lot more today, but for now, this is it. What I want to do is that when once I click save, I delete both of these of these things. Okay. So here in my store purchase, what I could do is at the end of store purchase, I just delete reference and delete quantity. So we could do purchase, take this and do value equals to nothing, or maybe even to the one I already had here, choose your reference. And the other one will be zero or nothing. Zero. Let's see. Let's see. Let's try it out. For example, we're going to create APP008, 45. Let's say. And here it works. Here it doesn't work. Let's see why. Because here I have reference. So here it should be quantity. Again. Perfect. But may maybe not zero, but just leave it empty also. Let's see. Okay, it's working really nice. So one thing that maybe we could improve is that this is not a dropdown, maybe just an, an autocomplete, but I think this works really nice. Another thing we could do is maybe create a date field because not always your inventory will be today's date. So maybe you can have the option to do today or just to have a, a date. But what I'm going to do right now is to stop this series and you will tell me what should I do next. I know, I know what I need to do next, actually. I need, because this only works for purchases. It should work also 
for sales and then do the inventory. So I think this is what I'm going to do next, but please, the ones who are seeing this, just start writing in the comments what else we want to see. So we have a really nice web app for inventory. So right now it still only works with reference, but it's a much nicer formulary that has this dropdown. I think this is the only thing we did today, the dropdown. And then once we save, it resets again. But we've started to, to create the framework where we can do much, much more advanced things. Thank you so much. If you want to download the template, you know, you just go to the Patreon page and that's it. Thank you so much to my Patreons because this wouldn't be possible without them. So thank you. And if you just want to say thanks via subscribing to the channel or a like or a comment, that's excellent also. Thank you so much. See you next time.